creation of these national mechanisms for uh, discussion, uh, coordination, and, and raising awareness in, in the local community of, of internet governance in general. Um, Although, I mean, if, if we just look at, at the roles uh, that CCTLDs play in, in, in the region with respect to national um, IGFs, um, I would say that we are still in, in emerging, uh, in an emerging stance uh, in, in the region. Uh, there's a uh, few countries who have already sort of developed this national IG uh, forums. Um, we have some examples here and in the room, uh, Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Costa Rica. Um, they are countries uh, that have, have um, been uh, developing this um, increasingly, this, uh, this kind of forums. If we look at uh, governance as, as a process um, and, and governance uh, involving policy decisions, um, CCTLDs have also been sort of revisiting uh, th this idea about uh, w what the role is in, in the general uh, internet uh, policy making in the country. So in that respect, um, it's just to making uh, CCTLDs more aware of, of uh, the role that they are playing and, and that they can still play uh, to develop uh, this field. Um, in like TLD in particular, we are um, we are very uh, much uh, focused and, and aware of, of the importance of, of this issue, and we are. Um, trying to make uh, to generate a, a, a greater uh, awareness for our community regarding IG in general, and we have uh, for the first time this year <coughs> we have in, been involved in the program committee of the regional LAC IGF. So um, and w we we have uh, an increased uh, uh, participation of our members in this meeting, and we um, we have also been um, involved uh, in the <coughs> in the generation. <coughs> I'm sorry, of a national um, IG session um, at the LAC IGF to raise awareness and to promote uh, the, the vision in the uh, Latin American and Caribbean community about the, uh, this role that uh, CCTLDs as historical internet players have developed in, in the region. So well, this is basically a very basic introduction, but thank you for the minutes. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, thank you so much, Carolina. Thanks a lot, Peter. It's really good to know that uh, there's going to be a sort of booklet coming up uh, shortly to summarize what has been done in terms of uh, IG initiatives uh, for from the CCTLD regional organizations. And um, I also think that uh, over the years, uh, um, the uh, regional organizations have produced uh, some sort of guidelines uh, about internet governance and, and summaries, uh, which I know that have been also used by government representatives uh, to get familiar with this world of internet governance that is becoming more and more complicated uh, over the over time because uh, um, every day we hear a new organization coming up and say, yes, I want to get involved in the IGF. Uh, yes, I want to do this. And sometimes it's difficult to find the links uh, between the different organizations. So I'd like to now leave the floor to the numerous representatives uh, of the CCTLDs. Uh, and um, the question is, uh, is uh, internet governance a real hot topic at local level? And what your CCTLD has been doing uh, to promote uh, what we have called the IG literacy at local level and not only at local level? And uh, I'm looking at all of you to see if there is a volunteer who can start uh, uh, to speak and, uh, and tell us uh, a bit more to answer these two questions. So thank you. <laughs> Not too bad sound. Well, we can start north from Norway, that I know. Um, what we have been doing for some years is to fund a research program in uh, University of Oslo, uh, Department of Private Law. Uh, they are doing research on DNS and different topics connected to internet governance. And what we see from the research is that there is a fine balance between the DNS and itself and running the DNS and also the rest of internet governance topics. So um, I have links for everybody who wants to see the research, of course. Uh, one of the um, fellows uh, is closely connected to the Internet and Jurisdiction Project. 
So we see that it's not only national, but also internationally um, uh, important f f for them to, to, to give it out, and also for us as CCs to be able to, to give it out to our local community. Which we try to do, but it's, it's of course, uh, a limited uh, local interest, uh, unfortunately. But we see, we see also uh, our registrars getting um, more, import, uh, um, uh, more interested. We have registrar seminars where we try to um, do information on uh, internet governance. Uh, and also we made a booklet of um, domain conflicts uh, that we try to uh, give out in our local community. Uh, and I think center also, it's a good example of center being a key role, uh, having a key role in this because they could also use the booklet to translate it to other uh, national operators. So, um, and we are working on uh, refining it to try to make it more suitable for lawyers and judges and the court system because we see that there is a lack of knowledge about DNS. Yeah. But overall, I think the interest in internet governance in Norway, probably it's more over to content. What is happening on the net? Yeah. And us from the east. <laughs> uh, my name is Sun Xiantang uh, from CNIC, the CCTLD Registry of China, uh, Director of International Cooperation Department. Um, the, now today um, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our experience and some stories and also update some news of uh, how the internet governance situation in China. Um, at the beginning of this year now we have a new ministry uh, it's called the Cyberspace Administration um, of China. It, it directly uh, reported to our Xi, uh, Xi Jinping president. So it's a quite high level um, new ministry. The role of that ministry is to um, co cooperate and collaborate with other uh, internet related ministries. So now the CINIC um, is no longer belong to China, a kind of a science. Now we belong to um, the cyber administration of China. Um, but uh, still, our role is still quite academia. And we still do our own research and we run the CCTLD, I mean the .cn. And we are still a non profit organization. And, uh, and today, we just applied for the GTLD at .gongsi.wonderful.com.net in the IDN. So uh, we are still cynic, and <laughs> but we have new rules. And also the internet governance situation in China now they are um, start to move forward today. So um, before I talk about the how we see and manage the internet governance in China, I would like to share my view and, and the, the, the core philosophy of how we see the internet how and why we do internet governance. I believe the key value of the internet governance is, f to, is for the development. And also that's one, number one. Number two is to solve problem. And the key for the development and solve problem is to, um, with, to, to provide enough resource, provide uh, good enough capacity building and have good uh, collaboration channels. With those three things, we can have a very healthy internet governance model. So um, from the role of Scenic, now at the moment we are a platform of internet governance in China because now we are pro providing fundamental resource, I mean the domain name for the industry. So we have a committee in China and also we organize um, meetings to bring the government uh, from different different um, uh, ministries and from domain um, industries and also from the internet industry like Alibaba, like Baidu, like I mean the uh, um, everyone doing business related to the internet. And also we are we, we, we are um, a member of 
the academia, we bring researchers together, and we have representatives from the civil society as well. So because we are providing the fundamental resource, we some kind related to everyone. So this is the na natural advantage of um, of Scenic to bring everyone together to to have the meeting to provide us, um, suggestions and bring ideas and solve problem um, in the round table. And the other function of Scenic in terms of internet governance is we we kind of have a natural naturally neutral position when we see how the Chinese internet develop. So we have an annual report, I mean statistical report of how the Chinese internet grow. We have the numbers and we can vividly um, check the data numbers of the Chinese internet. So this kind of free service we provide to the to the whole industry. And the third function, I mean the third key value of internet governance from CNA is we we uh, we have invested a huge amount uh, human resource and funding to improve capacity building. I mean because China is um, still a developing country, we have a lot of uh, rural area. They don't have good enough internet. And the domain names, DNS servers, this kind of service is so important. So we do a lot of in terms of that. And the last role of Scenic, I mean, we we uh, we 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 have in the internet governance ecosystem, we bring international organizations to China, and also we introduce Chinese development to the um, international organizations, like the regional organizations, APTLD, APNIC. IGF, ICANN, ISOC, ITU, WISIS, and even the Net Mundial. I mean, <laughs> everywhere we go there and introduce and, and to make friends. I think, I mean, only development and problem solve and capacity building can bring a real healthy and a long term model for internet governance. Thank you. Hi, uh, uh, I'm uh, Manuel from, from New Mexico, and, and let's talk a little bit about how, how we, we believe that in uh, New Mexico it's our role of, of increasing IG literacy uh, within local ecosystem w in, in Mexico. Uh, given the fact that the CCTLDs are endowed with, with a responsibility of, of fostering an ecosystem and, 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 and um, making uh, technical availability of, of, of the internet resources within our country. We believe that, that, that there is no better uh, institution than us in order to increase IG literacy within the country. And, um, and let's talk a little bit about what we have done. We have been making uh, several efforts. Nick, Nick Mexico has been around uh, since 1989. We have been, uh, it's our, our, our 25th birthday uh, this year. So, so we have been making uh, single efforts uh, within Mexico, in order uh, sometimes partner with with uh, several authorities, for example in copyright topics, in uh, in, in order to to understand how the UDRP works uh, uh, locally applied to the .mx. But I believe uh, recently we have made two two very important efforts that that have been fostering IG literacy in Mexico. Um, one effort is 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 that we are sponsoring. Uh, ISOC Internet uh, Next Generation Leaders Program, the version in Spanish. It is sponsored by us, and and this has made uh, made us. Um, we have been able to create a, a community of, of young leaders and, and, and enthusiasts in internet governance, uh, leaders from 20 to 40 years old, um, next generation leaders that, that are supposed to, to take on the next year's uh, important roles in, in decision making within Mexico, and. This has worked very well because we have at least li like a 15-person uh, community that that is um, engaging very intensively in, in internet governance topics and decision making in Mexico. And another thing is that we have been creating the we were crucial at, the, at creating our local uh, uh, internet governance initiative. It's called a Grupo Iniciativa in Spanish and Initiative Group in in English. And and this group is, is is in charge of creating the dialogues for internet governance. That's our our local IGF effort. Um, 
we along uh, other organizations like Google and, and, and Presidency and, and, and several uh, academic organizations within Mexico have been working very strongly in, 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 in fostering this, this IGE literacy program um, because we believe uh, strengthening the understanding of these topics will, uh, will help uh, create a, a better understanding on, on, on how internet governance um, should work globally and how the, their local aspects might have impact uh, within Mexico in order to, to keep the internet as open and interconnected uh, as, as we have known it uh, from now. And we are very open and, and always looking forward to, to increase our efforts in this, in, in this increasing of, of literacy. And so far I believe that's, that's what we have done, the, the many important topics that we have done in Mexico. Morning. Uh, my name is Hirohoto from uh, .jp. The organization is JPRS, the Assisted Registry. Uh, in Japan, there's a small conference held almost almost annually called IGF Japan, mainly promoted by uh, ISP Association. Unfortunately, it has been just a meeting among a few dozens of people where most of them know each other for a long time. This means that IGF Japan has not been able to be an IG initiative in, uh, in Japan. So especially uh, from the technical aspect of the mechanism about how the internet works with the focus on domain names, CCT registries like us has its audience, those who are in the in at least a domain name market, and CCT registry can reach them, maybe with the help of registrars. And as to our organization, uh, JPRS, that operates JP CCT registry, we are a for-profit organization, maybe different from uh, almost of you. And people tend to accept non-profit organization as a suitable leading advocate of the internet governance. I don't know if that is correct or not, but uh, people tend to do so. And we strongly support JPNIC in establishment and operation of internet governance related activities in Japan. JPNIC is our parent organization who had been managed JP domain names before the JP was re-delegated to us. JPNIC is a non-profit organization for internet-related literacy in general in launching a forum concerning internet governance, which is called IGCJ, Internet Governance Conference Japan. That is the forum. Uh, it was recently launched in Japan. Uh, it doesn't have IGF, the three letters IGF in its name. It is just because, at least we thought that uh, when people see a string, IGF, in its name, they usually tend to think it works and operates like IGF, global IGF. As proper effective activities on internet governance will be run differently country by country, so we decided to avoid including the string IGF its name the new, in the new organization. We just had two meetings of IGCJ uh, so far in these three months. The first one was tuned to IANA transition, and the second one was tuned to net neutrality. We are now in the phase of characterizing the forum through uh, consultation with the attendees. For example, whether we try to make a proposal by IGCJ on each issue or not is <coughs> under discussion. And I want to say some more. As many of us may agree, we believe uh, IG literacy should be based on internet literacy. We think raising internet liter literacy is essential first of all. And in parallel, we report to the community regularly 
what's happening in IKEA meetings to make the community know what the hot topics are, especially related to domain names. And to raise internet literacy, for example, uh, JPRS tries to raise internet literacy by face-to-face -face education of the internet. Uh, for example, what is the internet? How does internet work? And statistics related to the internet and so on. To companies, students, uh, and we host contests for, for example, for website creation by students and so on. So we do a poor, a poor, a poor a lot of resource to the raise internet literacy in Japan. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Iro. And um, I'd like also to invite the, any um, attendees uh, to come up with questions at the end of each intervention. And I'll be happy to facilitate addressing the question to uh, our panelists. So feel free to uh, you know, just come up with questions or observation anytime. And again, we'll uh, make sure they are properly addressed. Um, so I've seen that uh, all, the, all the interventions are coming from one side of the table. And to balance uh, this, uh, I don't know if it's, uh, but as we are having a connecting continents as the theme of this uh, IGF meeting, would be nice to hear somebody from another continent who has been silent so far. Thank you. Well, Mohamed El Bashir, I'm from South. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm currently running uh, uh, .qa uh, uh, registry and uh, .qa uh, IDNC CTLD registry. And I was also to give you a perspective of my um, experience in uh, running .sd as well in, in Africa. I think it's uh, coming from, from the developing world. Uh, CCTLD registries could be a model to a multi-stakeholder organizations. Uh, uh, I mean, by having structures and governance that include different multi-stakeholders, which is very important. For example, um, in, in the registry that I have uh, managed back, back home in Sudan, it's, we have a board consists of uh, academia, government, uh, civil society, uh, and they all collectively uh, engage uh, in making decisions related to the management of the CCTLD. So that that model itself is, is could uh, could could be an example in the country uh, related to internet governance issues um, in general. Uh, policy development is is another aspect as well. Uh, um, we could be a model by developing our policies in a in a bottom-up multi-stakeholder process. Uh, so that as well that could uh, be an example to other internet governance initiatives in uh, in, in the countries. And I have seen that in in, in practice um, that bring change to other internet organizations in my country. Uh, capacity building. Uh, we have been engaged in capacity building in different levels. Um, for example, uh, 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 promoting uh, internet issues like IPv6 adoption to uh, generally academia, to ISPs, to the, 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 the technical community uh, in the country. And partnering with RIRs I think is important uh, as well to bring them on board. Uh, it's also crucial to in in the developing world and from my experience that the uh, capacity building and education and awareness to governments, that is very critical. Uh, we did run some of the workshops that directed to government officials and discussing issues related to internet governance. Usually we do this before a major event like the Wicked, like uh, uh, IGF, and we're trying to give them uh, the, uh, an idea about the global perspective, what is happening globally, and why we should take certain positions. So that role is important, uh, and I think it's as, as engaged as currently we are in the global 
community and this is TLD community we are able to influence the local the local uh, uh, views in, in internet governance uh, issues uh, because there's lots of perceptions really <coughs> about really who's doing what and as, as Giovanni said there's many players uh, in the internet governance arena currently we did some work as well in the multi-lingual uh, component of it, uh, because we applied for an IDNC's TLD, which is, although when you look at it from pure demand uh, um, uh, perspective, there might be at that time, there might be no interest in that area, but we took the initiative, we applied for the IDNC's TLD, it's currently operational, and we're facing issues in terms of adoption, uh, and we're trying as well to work with other local internet community to um, ensure that people are using the internationalized domain names with this, the current challenges we have. Uh, and across Africa as well, there is many organizations, many registries are also playing a role in the local internet governance for us. For example, in Nigeria, uh, Naira, who is the, the country's CSTLD registry, is currently the secretariat, and they're also funding the, the local uh, IGF. So you'll find the CSTLD as well taking a leading role uh, in, in establishing a local IG, uh, IGF and even, if sometimes even supporting and funding it. So I think most of the CSTLDs in the, in the region I came from, they're doing actively a, a role because they are the ones really to, to be an example. Yeah, thank you. morning to everybody. <coughs> there are some, sorry, Demi, oh, sorry. there are some slides coming up. Ah, okay. Yeah, thank Let you. Let me put here also to check. Yes. Okay, put, put the next one. So okay. ah. you, you can control, just two or three. Right? Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, then uh, good morning to everybody. My name is Demi Gechko. I am from .vr. Uh, uh, just a, a very uh, brief history about, of course, we, we as, as uh, Nick Mexico and others, uh, we are f uh, uh, in our f uh, 25th uh, year of, of operation. And uh, as you know, at the very beginning, all the registration of domains uh, uh, were free. Uh, .com were free, and .br were free. Also, uh, all these domains were not not uh, charged. And the thing began changing in '95. In '95, uh, also uh, uh, we, we went from the academic area, from the academic research network, and so. But in 95, in Brazil, was created a, a body, a committee that is not a, a, has no juridical personality, but is just a bunch of people. Uh, this committee was created in some way to give some more formality to what we are was doing at that time. That was the, the registry, the registry of .pr, the register bear. Uh, one of the decisions of the committee in '96 was to, to begin to, to charge for the registration, uh, to, to make the activity self-sustained, self-sustainable also. Then uh, we began charging in '97. Uh, we have been lucky to have go a good number of our uh, registries <coughs> uh, under .br in. in, in, in in some time, we began to be self-sustainable, and then we can begin to have some kind of surplus. And this uh, surplus uh, can help the CGIBR to, to begin some actions in the Brazilian internet community. Just to, to illustrate, this is the composition, the actual composition of the CG, CGIBR. It's a multi-stakeholder organization, people from government, people from private sector, for uh, non-for-profit, for academic, and uh, one, one representative of the Nick Biara's liaison. Uh, as I said, the CGI BR was created in 95, revised revise in uh, 2003. Uh, the main uh, <coughs> 
the main objectives of CGI is to, to foster these activities here. We have to propose policies and procedures related to the regulation of internet activities. For example, we are very strong supporters of the, the Marco Civil law in Brazil. It took three years to become a law, but it's important to have some kind of law that protects the internet. Uh, the Marco Civil protects the neutrality, the privacy of the individuals, and the correct respons responsabilization of the intermediary uh, in the internet activity. We, we also make some studies, some technical proposals. For example, we propose that the, the, the closure of the, of the uh, port 25 to avoid spam in Brazil, and it was a very good measure because we fall, fall from the second place in the international spam to the 26th, uh, I, I, I suppose. Then it was a good measure. It's not not mandatory. We didn't uh, we did do not any kind of mandatory things. We as uh, at CGI. Of course, uh, uh, as I said, the CGI was built around the .br registry, and we also promote some kind of, of uh, research, some other kind of work. Uh, uh, here you can check what, what are the main activities of the NICBR. We, we got all, all your money from the register, register BR, the registry, and we... we <coughs> We give this money back to the internet uh, uh, with some activities. There are a lot of, of addresses here. You can check all of these addresses. Uh, CertBR is our Brazilian CERT. Uh, CertBR provides courses on security. was the major actor behind the closing of the uh, port 25 for, for the spam. Uh, the, uh, we, we, can, uh, we accumulate the reports on security. Everyone that has uh, some kind of concern about attacks or maybe a new view viruses or new malware or so can report to CERT. We have a team of about uh, 15 people in CERT working on that. And they are very well known internationally, are active in many fora. We have this uh, TICBR. It's the 10th year we generate statistics for Brazilian internet. It's a lot of statistics. It's all, all open for free. You can consult this in this page, CETIC.br. CETIC is also actually a, a, a UNESCO level two regional or uh, <coughs> member of, of, of uh, statistics for TICs. And we have this this SEPTRO. Uh, SEPTRO is a, a center for research. This SEPTRO has a, a, a main branch in uh, doing IXP operation. We have 23 IXPs operating inside the country. Uh, in each ISP, we have a mirror of the root uh, of many of different root servers. Then we are very well provided with mirrors. We give uh, IP6 courses and we have developed a good uh, uh, and uh, maybe interesting way to measure quality of uh, wide band and, and so in Brazil. We have a map with a lot of contributions with a lot of people around the country and how they feel the, the, the quality of the internet connection. We have a software to do that and also sm small boxes that can do the same. And also we, we uh, host uh, the regional office of uh, W3C. Okay, uh, more or less th these are, are the, the activities that Nick BR do. And uh, I, as I said, I, I, th I think the, the major, uh, the different characteristics is that we can provide uh, uh, arms, uh, hands to, to, to CGI to do things because we can provide resources. We, we have uh, two. One IGF meeting in Rio with the money came, came from uh, the NICBR, the Register BR. We have two ICANN meetings co-sponsored by, by these resources. And if all, if all goes well, next year the IGF in Brazil also will be sponsored by the, the resources coming from the .BR Register. Thank you. OK. Okay, no fight. We have four panelists. And Michael, please. Thank you, Giovanni. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, Giovanni, first of all, thank you for, for the question you asked us to, to answer. I mean, agile literacy. Uh, I haven't thought about our activities through such prism. I am from, uh, first of all, uh, excuse me, Mikhail Medrish, uh, uh, chair of the board of uh, Coordination Center for .ru, uh, for top-level domain CCTLD of Russia. So I, I haven't 
thought about uh, our activities through such prism, literate and literate. And I was to, to, to ask myself, who is illiterate? Who, is, uh, uh, who are such those persons we are to educate or we can to educate or to rise the education level, the, the level of literacy? First of all, uh, I, I got the question from my mind and uh, I understood we are on the right way. What I mean? First of all, who is illiterate? Why society? They don't know, and I suppose they are not. Um, no, and it, it's natural why they are to know about internet governance. They use internet, and that's all. But uh, inside this huge amount of persons, uh, we know about one strata, which is very, very urgent, kids. They are to educate. We are to help them to understand better. No matter what they will uh, do in future, maybe they will make internet and they are to understand. So we founded so-called smart, inter uh, smart Internet Foundation. This foundation registered dot dt domain name uh, the same as kids but in russian dot dt so one of the goal of this uh, foundation is to to educate to educate kids our an uh, another part of our activities in uh, this direction and direction of literacy uh, is uh, is something dealt with uh, those who who are not illiterate absolutely Government, uh, technical uh, uh, s uh, persons, uh, registry and registrars, they are absolutely literate, but they are to have some fields, some p meeting points to discuss new events, to discuss new ideas, to, to rise up their literacy. We organized, uh, we hosted two um, such points. Russian Internet Governance Forum, five years. The fifth one um, uh, took place in April, uh, yes, April this year. And uh, International um, Conference for CCTLD Registries and Registrars of CIS, Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, the seventh conference uh, will take place in Baku next week. And we understand very clear that we are to, to move forward with these uh, processes to help all our friends, to help registrars, to have registries, to have government, government governmental persons, persons from government, uh, to, to understand better new ideas and to move in the right directions. And we are doing this. So. We are working in the field of IG literacy. Yes, it is. Hi, uh, my name is Vika Mpisane. I'm uh, from the .za CCTLD South Africa's uh, top level domain. Uh, substantially, I've been covered in some of my answers by some of the responses that have been given. I think for, for for my country, it's important to mention that, uh, or to point out that the extent to which the internet has penetrated the society uh, is fairly substantial, but there's still some substantial way to go. Around 50% of our population um, use the internet. Uh, this has been growing in a fairly impressive way, largely thanks to mobile uh, telephony or mobile connectivity. With that uh, figure of uh, at least 50% of the population um, having access to the internet comes the inevitable consequence of the fact that it means at least 50% of the population is not so much well uh, taught of what's happening in the internet and the issues of internet governance. So there's still a substantial lot of awareness that we, we, are, we need to do. As the CCTLD, we are a statutory entity in South Africa that reports to government. 
And one of the requirements for us is to uh, create uh, awareness about the domain name system and the issues of the internet. So in essence, that's what we are working on currently. Uh, we are, will be starting our own awareness campaign um, in the middle of this month. They're just final touch-ups. Part of that campaign, obviously, inevitably includes uh, internet governance, awareness, and literacy. Uh, first, in relation to some of the key stakeholders in South Africa, uh, ICT entities as well. We still need to work on that area quite strongly. We are working with our government uh, to finalize strategies on internet governance, uh, not just awareness, but also formulating South Africa's view of what is happening currently with the changes in how the internet is governed. Now, it's also important also to mention that we see in South Africa internet governance as part of um, the ongoing ICT policy review of government. Um, and as the CCTLD, we participate in one of the committees. We recently made submissions about uh, internet governance, the role of different entities, and the role of CCTLDs, their impact on South Africa. So this will follow as it develops, but it gives us an opportunity as well to, to, to play a, a leading role in, in, in explaining or teaching more the rest of other stakeholders or ICT entities and even government uh, entities about the importance of uh, internet governance. So that's pretty much a, in a nutshell what we are doing in South Africa and we are watching what other CCTLDs and what other countries are doing and I, I think also eventually with this ICT policy review process the outcome we hope for is to get a more comprehensive strategy so that the CCTLD manager, uh, Zedna, is empowered by law to uh, have clear powers when it comes to these issues. Currently, it's be, we play that role largely as a custodian role because we are seen as an internet entity and we are required also by the law to advise government on, on internet issues. So that's where we are as South Africa. You. Um, I'm Ellen Strickland from Internet New Zealand, and um, we're delegated .NZ CC, but we also are um, a charity dedicated to um, the broader sort of aim of a better world through a better internet is our vision. And so internet governance literacy is an interesting sort of lens to look at the work we do. For us, our leadership on internet governance is about facilitation and really accountability being key. That it, in terms of our mindset, um, it is that the service to the internet community comes first, that, that we're prioritizing the community. Um, and so uh, the main sort of event we have uh, in terms of an internet governance initiative is NetHui, which is in its, we've just had our fourth year um, of a national NetHui, and which has about 600 people attend and is very much um, an internet community event, bottom up in terms of um, dealing with the myriad of internet issues, um, including international internet governance issues, but very much about the community. Um, we we also have uh, what we call regional NetHui, so New Zealand has two main islands, um, and in the South Island we've had um, a NetHui South, um, one in Dunedin, and we're having one in Christchurch in a few months, so to try to sort of reach out further into the community. Um, because our national events have been in the capital, Wellington, and in Auckland, the largest city. Um, and we've, we've been very lucky with those national events and that we have a really active community um, from across, um, across sort of all the stakeholder groups, if you will. We have private sector sponsors, um, broad support from the technical community, from users. Um, we have quite good engagement with um, government, um, both as sort of public service, but also we run a parliamentary internet forum with um, members of parliament who are very engaged in the program and have a panel, um, as well as having an ongoing process with them that's about IG literacy, I suppose, with, with the members of parliament having sessions to learn about the internet. Um, 
for us, I suppose one of the key issues is when we made the decision to have this event, the idea of an internet governance forum um, was sort of as a term something that the community didn't find interesting. That they were interested though in internet issues, in regulation, in legislation, um, in the development of the internet as users, as developers, as the private sector um, who are actively you know, creating the internet. So, um, so we've chosen that different name. Um, and, and we don't use that term, um, or the term multi-stakeholder much either. Um, people wear a lot of hats and, and don't identify necessarily with one stakeholder group the way we might. Um, so I think we've tried to have a lot of links within that event between the topics um, internationally at the regional, um, Asia Pacific Regional IGF, um, but have it be very much bottom up. So we put a lot of energy into um, having the program come from the issues and developments that are happening with our community. And, and we've seen that lead to um, outcomes in terms of um, action that go on from there um, within the different communities, so within with MPs, with the business community. Um, directly, we've also, last year we had some fellowships. So we had um, fellows from NetHui come to attend the international IGF to make some links. And I think broadly, um, you know, while that initiative is, is one of the, the main things, I would say, that is our internet governance sort of literacy, broadly, a lot of the work we do around, we do a lot of community funding as well as engagement that I think is really important. So um, towards, towards that literacy, if you will, the ecosystem, developing it. We have strategic partnerships with academic institutes, um, including the New Zealand version of the World Internet Project. So trying to understand what's happening with the internet in New Zealand and how that relates to the world. Um, as well as um, research on sort of intellectual property and law. Um, and we've recently um, started instituting an annual community grant round that's about internet research broadly. And that really was an outcome of NetHui and that we had a lot of researchers attending and they sort of created an on the fly birds of a feather meetup, which then became a formal session. And later this year, we're um, initiating a New Zealand internet research forum um, sort of group. And we're having a one day meeting that's just for them. That's multidisciplinary with a technical and non-technical track. And is about supporting sort of the research community on internet issues. So, um, so these things sort of link to me in terms of funding and, and that engagement. Um, and we sort of work to, to ensure that, um, yeah, that the breadth of our work with the community is helping understand um, what matters to them um, and, and relate that to the broader international internet governance. So, yeah, thanks. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Pierre Bonis, I'm deputy CEO from AFNIC, uh, the registry of uh, .fr. So thank you Giovanni for your questions. Uh, and you ask us if internet governance was a hot topic. Uh, in France, not at all. Uh, in France, no one cares. Internet governance is something that is discussed within a group of people, maybe 10 or 20 for 10 or 20 years. They all know each other. Uh, it doesn't mean that people don't discuss internet governance related topics. And that's the point I want to make. Uh, uh, when AFNIC goes out and organize a special session on internet governance, uh, you know, advertising it in newspaper, saying go and say what you think. I mean, we always have the all 10 friends we know for 10 years, uh, and, and that's great. Uh, but if there is something, just like for, I have to thank ICANN for that, by the way, uh, the dot wine affair, uh, where uh, from in the newspaper you have a lot of people who are talking about this thing that no one knows that is somewhere in California that decide for the French winemakers, then 
then you can you can talk about internet governance. Uh, so it's not about uh, really bringing the knowledge of what it is. Uh, it's more about trying to track each and every debate that can be related to internet governance and try to build on that a, a discussion, a dialogue, maybe not a consensus. Uh, and that's what, what, we try, uh, what we try to do. For instance, uh, as we are an association, uh, we have some internal commissions that discuss various topics. Uh, and when it comes to uh, the IANA transition, for instance, uh, we open these internal commissions and try to bring people from the outside. Uh, but we have been a partner of the first uh, French IGF. <laughs> that was this year. I mean, we, it took us some time to do it. Just before uh, the uh, IGF mandate is renewed, it was time. It was about time to make an, a French IGF, uh, because at this time there was hot topics on the newspapers. Thanks to Mr. Snowden. Thanks to NTIA. Thanks to a lot of things. It was a success. We had a lot of people and new faces in this French IGF. So once again, uh, it's always possible to discuss about these topics. And I really feel that it's difficult to discuss about internet governance in general, except maybe in some academic uh, places when uh, people were doing research. Uh, uh, and especially political research uh, will try to understand how we work. But, uh, but I'm not sure that uh, average people are, are, are very interested by that. And last thing, um, we, uh, we participate, of course, to uh, several, um, several uh, initiatives, uh, uh, just like the uh, uh, Young Leaders uh, Initiative that, uh, that was mentioned by um, my Mexican colleague, or, or, or we, we deliver sponsorships or scholarships for, for some uh, young, uh, young student to go to uh, internet government schools, uh, <laughs> because we had that. <coughs> Uh, uh, and, uh, and we also found some discussions with our African counterparts sometime uh, through a ethnic initiative that is called uh, 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 Collège International de l'Afnic uh, for them to participate to the main uh, internet governance uh, international discussions. Uh, so that's what I wanted to say about what we bring as literacy. Just mentioning uh, also that, of course, as the uh, CCTLD registry, <coughs> a lot of officials, governmental officials, parliamentary people, ask us uh, to explain when there is a international discussions. We participate to a lot of parliamentary auditions. We, uh, we discuss with the French administration. Uh, but it's still not bringing some IG literacy to our country. It's giving our point of view. Of course, we are neutral, which we, we think we are neutral. We think we, we don't take position. Uh, in fact, we have, we have been playing a part in internet governance discussions for years. And uh, I think we CCTLD, when we are asked something by our government or by our um, uh, parliaments, uh, we give our position. We are not bringing some neutral information on internet governance. So we play that role. And we know that we are one voice in the middle of others in, in a country where there is a traditional strong opposition uh, towards a, the main organizations that are within the internet governance, just uh, su such as um, uh, ICANN, for instance. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Pierre. Um, can I ask? Um, Everybody here in this room, uh, including the panelists, uh, um, who has attended uh, a local uh, IGF? Uh, if there's been a local IGF initiative, who has attended it? 
Okay, I would say something like a bit more than 50%. Thank you. And I'd like to, to catch up on what uh, Pierre just said, that uh, it's difficult to, uh, let's say, um, market internet governance uh, as a whole. But there are some themes uh, that are more or less relating to the internet governance debate uh, that the registries uh, and eventually even the regional uh, CCTL organizations can work on. Uh, and then from there, they can uh, um, really um, link them to the broader internet governance debate. Um, can I ask you what do you believe are the hot teams in your areas, in your countries? Um, there have been some that have been mentioned, like the Snowden case, or Internet of Things, or the right to be forgotten, or IP rights, uh, human rights, and much more. What do you think are the hot teams that uh, just, uh, you know, a couple or three hot teams uh, that you may have detected in your respective countries or regions uh, as for the regional organizations. So no more than three words. Thank you. And Mike is on the table. Thank you. Privacy. And remarkably, at least I was surprised by it. Access. It's still an enormously relevant topic in Europe. Yes, I, um, I agree. Uh, privacy access. And um, in Latin America, we cannot underestimate the effects of uh, Net Mundial in general. I mean, and, and the overall presence of uh, high-level uh, ministers attending the conference and, and being very participative and aware of, of the issue and having actually effects on national uh, policy authorities over the internet uh, just right before and after Net Mundial. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can say two words, content management. Content, content management. Uh, for South Africa, uh, the, um, the, the items that have been listed apply, but the three key ones, especially from what we are doing on Internet governance currently, is obviously the focus on this ICANN IANA transition uh, from the policymakers' viewpoint. And linked to that is the issue of multi-stakeholders. Um, there seems to be an imaging view that the multi-stakeholder model still needs to be defined and its parameters need to be defined because currently they are not clear and how they impact on Africa is not clear. And then the third one is surveillance, obviously, for whatever happened with Snowden and others. Thanks. Uh, broadband access and access via mobile. That's a concern now. Yeah, I agree with uh, the access to everybody, broadband also. But just to make a short comment about the, the <coughs> uh, Snowden thing or so, I, I, I think, in my opinion, that uh, Internet is carrying uh, to, to heavy weight on that. Uh, a big part of the of the problem was in the in infrastructure, in the telecommunication infrastructure, and not in Internet itself. If you say about leak, leakage of cables, of optical cables, or even on cellular telephony, this is not really internet of course internet has a lot of guilt on that we don't not try, try to evade on that but just to make the things balanced thank you um, sustainable development and the security and the stable internet um, I still believe we um, no matter what form and what model internet governance is localized in in particular country I mean the whole the whole purpose is to have a more healthy and more developed more developed internet so um, stable stability and secure is uh, one of the key things to achieve this I have to agree about access, rural access, national. We have a network, you know, and rural network being rolled out. Um, privacy was probably the next biggest. Um, and an ongoing issue that's really a user issue but comes up for us is around um, 
content access, geo-blocking, um, that sort of stuff. Okay, and the three other topics are, I think is uh, our net neutrality, that's discussed a lot, um, privacy of course, and more broadly how to apply local rules, whether they are taxing rules or uh, or content rules or uh, uh, cultural uh, uh, exception rules uh, on the internet. Thanks. Well, I think it's fair to say that net neutrality is also a topic in Norway and, and security. <coughs> uh, and of course privacy. Uh, when it comes to content management, I think we've had some discussion on uh, Internet, intellectual property uh, breaches online. Um, yeah, I think that's the most important. Okay, in the case of Mexico, I believe it's access and reducing the digital divide, uh, privacy and cooperation with with local uh, uh, authorities and geolocalization, and um, content copyright. It's another hot topic, and. A foreseeing hot topic that that's going to be debatable uh, in, in the next year, I believe, it's net neutrality. Yes, thank you. Uh, the first one is the definition or well, requirement of multi-stakeholder model and how to apply a multi-stakeholder process to each issue in each individual country or region. The second one is Ayana. The third one is uh, net neutrality. Thank you. Seems that privacy is the winner at present so far, so it's an extremely sensitive topic. Um, now I'd like to, as uh, time is uh, approaching to the end of the workshop, but I'd like to um, um, have two quite provocative questions. Uh, first one is about Net Mundial and uh, how much you think that uh, your local communities have been uh, aware of the Net Mundial Forum, the outcome of the Net Mundial Forum? Do um, you think there should have been more involvement um, at local level for the Net Mundial, for contributing to the Net Mundial? And do you think there should be more um, now involvement uh, for what's going to be after the Net Mundial? And uh, the second question, so feel free to answer one of the two, is uh, for those of you working with um, registrars, so network of registrars, and as I said at the beginning, there is a basic rule that registrars in the room are not allowed to ask questions. So, and they are also not allowed to make comments. So um, it's the second rule that just crossed my mind. Okay, Twitters, they can ask questions. Um, so how much do you think that registrars should be involved in the internet governance dialogue? How much do you think you should uh, reach to your registrar communities to make sure that they contribute uh, constructively to whatever is discussed? Uh, um, because uh, um, contrary to the ICANN environment, which we are more or less used, uh, here in the internet governance we see not as many registrars, business, uh, uh, let's say, um, element business partners of our life in um, this dialogue. They are not so much involved. So do you think they should be more involved in the IG dialogue? And what do you think you should do to make them more involved? So I leave the, the floor to you. Feel free, anybody, to, to answer. and start with Peter. Thank you, Giovanni. Peter Svarosta from Center. Um, starting with the second question, yes, I definitely think they should be more involved. And um, therefore, we've invited them to our next General Assembly, uh, which is in about a month from now. And we're going to focus on the things that we think we could or should be doing um, together. Uh, Internet governance related, but also uh, more concretely related to some of the uh, European regulatory initiatives that will change the internet governance landscape as we know it, in particular in the areas of security. So to your second question, absolutely yes. Um, to your first question, I think NetMundial was already ambitious in its setup. 
in its timing and um, in what it was planning to deliver. I think it delivered within the expectations. Trying to build NetMundial on an even broader support basis, I think would have been tough. And we might have missed the, um, I think, useful outcome document that we now have at the table. Um, where we think, where I think I, I see room for improvement is in bringing those um, conclusions downstream and making sure that the conclusions from Net Mundial are taken up in the local internet governance uh, initiatives and fora. It, it might not help that in the meantime there's already been an IGF which will pick up on some of these. There has been the Net Mundial initiative which rather in an untransparent way already picked some of those topics up. Um, so it's, I, I think it's highly recommended for any CCTLD that is organizing an internet, local internet governance forum to look at that carefully and see what they can take from there and move forward. Yeah. As for the involvement of local community or the French one in Net Mundial, uh, uh, we had a session just before Net Mundial, but it was not very uh, attended, as I explained before. Uh, 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 what I see that is really interesting with Net Mundial is the 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 outcome of Net Mundial. This this declaration, this paper that is short, that is clear. And that can be very helpful uh, to distribute and to explain what is at stake. I mean, uh, this is the first document that is readable, uh, 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 being an outcome of an in internet governance uh, uh, thought. Uh, so, so, so this is very useful, I, I really think. As for the involvement of registrars, some registrars in France are really involved in uh, internet governance, and they are partners in, uh, in the local IGF. Uh, maybe because there are businesses that they uh, they give some uh, some advice to their customers. Uh, some other are big registrar who are just registering domain names, and I, I, I don't really see them getting very much involved uh, uh, in, in internet governance. Or, or maybe they would be involved, but they will not talk about it. It's a different position from different business pers perspective, but of course, uh, we would like more registrars to uh, to be involved in the debate. Yes, thank you. I, I couldn't agree more with with Pierre. I, I think that um, we've got here with the Net Mondial um, um, document. I mean, there's a, a very concrete output from uh, and uh, the CCTLD community and every stakeholder can benefit from having something very concrete and tangible. And um, regionally, we have worked uh, in with LAC in, in, from LACTLD with uh, other stakeholders in trying to uh, bring down <coughs> the effects of this document uh, and in the like IGF, we are uh, putting forward uh, in, in our regional uh, IGF um, meeting um, <coughs> a process uh, for 2015 where we aim at sort of building a regional agenda on the Net Mundial uh, document. So um, regionally we're doing that effort and I hope that nationally that is taking place as well. Regarding registrars, um, when, when we talk about governance, it's very much as I mentioned in my first inter intervention, it's we are talking about a process and if we have processes, the more diversified the ecosystem is, the more diversified the players are, the better. And if we look at uh, the Latin American Caribbean region where we've got uh, less than 30 ICANN accredited registrars, um, then uh, we need more diversity and, and registrars are an important business player for the community and the more diversification we have, the more complex and the more interesting this governance process becomes. There uh, are words about involvement of registrars. Uh, to be involved or not to be involved, that's not a question. <laughs> because if a registrar, some certain registrar, wants to be involved, he will involve himself. So if he's active, if he understands 
uh, his goals and pure understanding that he can involve, he can uh, influence to the uh, processes, he will be there. So some of Russians uh, registers are involved, them, they involve themselves. And they are using all possibilities to speak about their um, understanding in the R Russian Internet Governance Forum, other forums. For example, one of them is here, Dmitry. Um, he is one of the registers. So they are involved, really. Who, who knows what, the, what they want to, to, to have? Good morning, my name is Peter Bruck. I'm coming from Austria. I'm the chairman of the World Summit Award and we are uh, paralleling what um, IGF does regarding governance. We are looking at globally in terms of how content is uh, basically moving on to the internet and what is best practice in using internet for high quality content. Uh, when I listen to uh, your conversation, I'm very much moved by the examples from New Zealand and what you're telling us about Brazil and, uh, uh, and other countries. Uh, and I also want to speak to the issue of what Pierre, you said regarding uh, the Net Mundial and also the outcome. It seems to me that there's a naivete of us ourselves regarding the infrastructure and the political economy of the internet. Uh, we are not talking about who is putting in the basic network, what are the access costs, and we are actually not seeing that uh, the over-the-top uh, uh, players are actually cannibalizing even, you know, the registry business. So, uh, from my point of view, uh, the question which I have to you is, is, how do you look at the political economy of the internet in your own country, because um, the telco players do something completely different, and uh, the over-the-tops do something completely different, and um, the community, which is uh, meeting at IGFs, you know, is actually sandwiched in between. And I would think that uh, that community is squeezed. And I think we are squeezed out and we are kept alive by some, uh, I mean, uh, business uh, protocol and action plan. And uh, if it's reviewed next year in 2015, we will see if there's a new setup. But if you even look at uh, the difficulty to fund the coordinator of IGF, you know, for two years we had an interregnum and nobody was willing even to put up $600,000 for, I mean, I, I mean, uh, that uh, somebody like Yanis Kaklins could be appointed, then you see very much where we are at, you know. And the key issue here is uh, the internet moves on, and we are actually holding on to a certain kind of multi-stakeholder dream in the community. And if we are not looking at the political economy issue, an infrastructure cost issue and how we are actually, I mean, what kind of leverage we can have. I'm very skeptical that we can continue that way and have this kind of open discussions and also the very valuable, important issues. So I want to put it to each and every one of you of how you address this in your own country and how actually, for instance, in South Africa, you know, you have for the registry, I mean, what, what is your relationship, for instance, with the people who put the telcos in, and what is uh, the relationship, you know, in other countries, you know, where Facebook comes in and says, we are going to go and uh, issue, I mean, and, uh, and solve the access issue. Sorry for speaking so long. Thank you so much. So, who's going to answer? Volunteers, please. Alan, thank you. And, and then Demi. Um, I think it's a very Im important, you know, part of um, the internet governance initiative that we have is one of the things that we get out of it is understanding the political political economy of um, the internet in our context and a bit more about how it relates internationally. Um, I think 
you know, in New Zealand, we're lucky that it's a small country. <laughs> and so getting to know, um, having relationships with our um, telecommunications, with the private sector, with government, um, understanding um, how things are changing and operating, um, we try to ensure that we have links to, as you said, Google, Facebook, have them come engage in these initiatives. So for us, it's an opportunity to, to develop an understanding um, relationships um, for other action that we take and, and for the community to understand it and, and the actions that they take. Um, we have Demi first and then Lika. Very, very shortly. I think this is a, a very complex question and it has to be related to the whole ecosystem of, of justice, of uh, anti-competitive uh, organs and uh, uh, privacy protection and protection of the consumer and so on and so on. I suppose what, what we can do at the internet is try to preserve the concepts of, of, of the, the original internet, like, like neutrality, like to provide to each user the whole experience of the, the complete internet and not uh, part of it then we are trying to do our job. But of course, to, to have uh, uh, the, the, the internet preserved, we have to, to have the, 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 the also the collaboration of all the, all, all the, the ecosystem, the, the justice system, the legal system, the anti-trusting system, and so on. So this is the reason we, we have uh, uh, struggled to have a law in Brazil, trying to protect the, the basic concepts related to the internet. But this is not standing alone. You have, we have to have uh, the, the the help of, of many others. Thank you. For us in, uh, in South Africa, pretty much along the lines of Brazil, um, I mentioned earlier that we have what is called the, the ICT policy review process that is um, supposed to define the whole ICT sector, the synergies and the relationships. As the law or the policies currently stand in South Africa, we have a telecoms regulator, and then we are outside the telecoms regulator. Where that is going forward, not an ideal scenario, and this ICT policy review process is meant to address this, because um, you have a certain side, for example, of the ISPs that falls under the telecoms regulator and gets a licenses there and then also the same ISPs also come to us to get in certain kind of licenses for you know domain name services and stuff so it's not a tenable scenario but we are currently defining it we are currently clarifying it and we in the process of this ICT policy review process we also are clarifying the whole internet economy agenda so that it doesn't sit desperately in different agencies or organizations we cannot anticipate what will be the outcome of the process but one of our submissions that we've made as a CCTLD has been to, uh, for our government to look at a possibility of uh, setting up sort of a comprehensive internet agency that deals with issues of regulation, that deals with issues of uh, education and awareness, security and all the stuff, so that there's cohesion in terms of how we deal with the, the whole internet economy agenda. Thanks. Very quickly, thank you very much for your question. Uh, I think that uh, in most countries, the debate that you are calling for already exists, but we don't call it the same the, the same way. Uh, most of the people around the table talked about access. Some other talked about net neutrality. But if you mix access with net neutrality, you have exactly what you said. Uh, who is financing the infrastructure? Uh, who has the power? Uh, uh, and this is at the heart of the debate everywhere. Uh, uh, and the role of the over the top and, uh, uh, and the economy of ISPs. So, uh, I mean, we are debating about that. Uh, it's a very hot topic with very great, powerful uh, uh, companies uh, uh, in it. And as a small registry, we just, uh, you know, give the room and the chairs and we come back at the end of the day. Thank you. Um, is there any other question from the audience? No? Any final uh, point you'd like to make? OK, if not, uh, I'd like to thank uh, all the attendees, uh, the panelists, and the technical support. Uh, um, there are some uh, takes uh, from this workshop. Uh, and. Um, 
it's true that internet uh, um, literacy is really at the basis of any internet governance literacy. And then we should really ask ourselves what is a, a literate in this uh, very complex environment. Uh, are we literate of this complex environment? Uh, I personally don't feel to be fully literate in this environment because there are some uh, areas um, which um, I don't have in my background and therefore it's extremely difficult at some point to catch up. So I think we can be literate to a certain extent. But I also like to thank again all the panelists uh, who have contributed uh, with their um, experiences and efforts uh, in promoting what is internet literacy and also internet governance literacy in their respective uh, regions and, and countries. Uh, um, your efforts uh, are uh, really amazing and uh, uh, so laudable. So um, I think that the main take uh, of this workshop is that uh, the CCTLD community um, will continue to be with the CCTLD regional organizations uh, um, a key player um, in this dialogue, in this uh, effort, uh, um, in this uh, work around the internet governance. And, and this uh, work will be even more valuable if more players can be uh, brought within this environment uh, to make sure that uh, we all become a bit more literate in the future. So thanks everybody and uh, I'll see you around. Thank you.